Do you need clear images quickly? Yeah, me too. Where are my glasses? Anyhow. <laughs> okay. How many applications can you think of that need clear images? Say when there is movement or maybe low light. Yeah, quite a lot. But have you considered that the quality of those images may be due to the shutter technology in the camera? Yep, it's all about a rolling shutter versus a global shutter. And folks, that's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Thomas Viart and Therese Embach from ST Microelectronics and I explore the benefits of global shutter image sensors and why these sensors are a great fit for a variety of consumer, industrial, and robotic applications and how you can take advantage of ST Microelectronics' broad and growing global shutter portfolio for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from ST Microelectronics. Hi, Thomas. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Hi, Therese. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. Thank you. So in the world of cameras, we have always heard about rolling shutter, but your cameras use the global shutter technology. So Thomas, explain to me what the difference is between rolling shutter and global shutter. So as you said, there is two main technologies used for cameras. The first one and the major one is called the rolling shutter cameras. This technology is everywhere. When you take a picture, for example, of a landscape with your phone, it will be a rolling shutter used to take a picture. This technology is quite mature and present everywhere. The principle of this technology is that you will take line by line all the pixels. So as you can see on the left part of the slide, from the first line and the last line, you will get an offset of a couple of uh, seconds or milliseconds, depending on the speed of the rolling shutter. But this is quite interesting when you take a picture of a static image, for example, a landscape or a non-moving object. But for some application where you have some moving artifact, where you need to take some speed movement, at this moment, you will need a global shutter sensor. And this is why, as you can see on the right, here, the principle is the opposite. You will take all the lines of pixel at the very same time. In very couple of milliseconds, all the lines will be integrated so it means that you will take and you will have a very static image, whatever the speed of the scene is. It means that you can take, for example, a barcode on an industrial automation line, for example, and it will be very static. Same if you take a picture of someone running a car on a highway, for example, you will get a very, very static image. So this is the principle of the global shutter, and this is what we will talk today. So, Therese, what are the key markets for global shutters? And what applications can we find them? Well, global shutters are becoming more and more important in many industries, and that's because they capture clear images very quickly. This makes them perfect for situations where you need fast and accurate pictures. So for example, in barcode reading, well, global shutters help scan barcodes on moving items without any issue. And this is essential for, for example, managing inventory, or warehouses, even logistic applications like conveyor belts. Global shutters are also used in computer vision. It helps robots like home assistants or drones to understand and react to their environments. Because when you have a drone, you need to get a very quick image, right? In the field of AR, VR, so augmented reality, global shutters improve the experience by capturing fast movements very smoothly. And this is the key for creating a realistic uh, environment. You can also find global shutters in security for face recognition and identification. And they help cameras take really clear pictures even when something is moving quickly or even in low light. So what you should remember here is that there are many, many applications and markets for global shutters. Fantastic. Now, we've been talking about how smart your cameras are. So, Thomas, what makes them smart? So, typically, in ST, we develop a new technology, which is called the 3D stacking. 
And as you can see on the left, the 3D stacking principle is to get two different layers of processing. The first processing is only dedicated to sensing. This is a 100% pixel array, as you can see in blue on the left. And then at the second layer, the bottom layer, you have all the processing which is done. Having this space in pink and in green, you have more processing space than a, a standard sensor you may find on the market. And because we can do more processing on the sensor, you can embed a lot and a lot of on-chip features. And as you can see on the, in the middle, all these on-chip features are available on the sensor itself. So today, we will talk about two of them. The auto wake-up, we will talk later, which is very useful for um, ultra-low power applications. And the second one, which is very interesting, is the image difference mode. So as you can see on the video, on the right, right here, the principle is to take two consecutive images and to do the difference of them and to only display or to output only what changed in the scene. So as you can see on this video, you will have very only the border of the changing scene. It means that you will output only few data compared to a complete image. What you see here can be done with any camera, with any host. But this will require a lot of power consumption, a lot of processing power. But this, what you see here, is done on the sensor itself. This is embedded on the sensor, on top of the image. So you will have to choose if you want to output the standard image, the regular image, full resolution, or if you want to output this, because this is done on the chip, saving more power, more processing. And power and processing cost is dollar cost. Torres, which of your products should we look at here? All right, so the first product you should look at is our camera integrating the sensor called VD55G1. This sensor is very special. So it's actually the smallest global shutter sensor in the world. It has close to 0.6 megapixel resolution, it's monochrome, and it's well known to be ultra low power. And not to brag, but this sensor has received the best sensor award at the Sensor Converge in 2024. So we're very proud of it. Okay, so now to evaluate this special sensor, you have what we call the Pro Modules. They are all-in-one camera modules that integrate our sensors, so in this case, the VD55G1, and they also integrate the lens and a plug-and-play connector. So the Pro Modules can be tested on computers with our main board that has a USB output, but they can also be tested and integrated on embedded processing boards like Raspberry, STM32N6, Qualcomm, and others. Thanks to the FFC cable we have on our Pro Module board. And finally, you have the sensor board for advanced customers to evaluate the sensor itself and to try different fields of view thanks to its M12 lens holder. So Thomas, you mentioned the low power consumption of your global shutter. Can you tell me more about that? Sure. So as I said, and as we said, the auto wake up mode is a quite interesting feature, allows the sensor to consume less and less power. This is quite interesting in this world where we want to reduce the power consumption on everything. The principle of this auto wake up mode is that the sensor will look at the scene with the field of view, and then we look at the pixel change. It means that if you have a certain amount of pixel which change in the scene, then you can raise an interrupt to wake up the host. And at this time, you can decide what you want to do. If you want to wake up, for example, a, a light, if you want to wake up um, a camera, another security camera, for example, or if you want just to count people, I don't know what you would like to do. As you can see at the bottom right corner, this is quite interesting because you will be at very low power consumption, around one milliwatt at one FPS. And then when something will be detected as a frame free, as you can see, then you will raise an interrupt, wake up the complete system, and then stream at full capability of the sensor, around 60 FPS at 35 milliwatt. And then after all the scenes, so all the consecutive frames, then the object just move away or the person move away then you go back to sleep mode and you go back to one milliwatt power consumption. This is very interesting, as I said, for example, for security cameras, for um, doorbells or other applications, we need to reduce power consumption and don't want to be always on. 
because with this sensor, you can save a lot, and I mean a lot of power based on the smart features inside this sensor. Thomas, this sensor is smart and low power, and that looks great. But what other nice features does it have? Another cool feature of this sensor is the interface. So as all our cameras and a lot of other cameras available on the market, we are MIPI CSI interface. But on top of this, our sensor, the VD55G1, is also I3C interface. This is the first ever camera having this nice feature. And what we mean by I3C is that you will output an image via I3C. For the person which are not aware about what is I3C, the I3C is an evolution of the I2C. This allows you to output more data than what you can output from an I2C interface. And this combines to all the features we just mentioned by the past, combined to, for example, a very small MCU, such as the SM32H5, will create a very smart and powerful device, always at very low power consumption. And this I3C interface is much more simple to integrate than any other MIPI or parallel interface. And this makes it very interesting. As Therese mentioned, this is mostly the reason why we won the best sensor award at Sensor Converge last year, because of the I3C and being the first I3C camera on the market. Therese, you've shown us the hardware, but what about the software? Okay, Amelia, so I showed you before the hardware kits you could purchase, but our software is available for free on our site, st.com. So you will find our evaluation GUI software that you will use with our main board and a pro module. But if you want to work with embedded processing boards, like I told you, Raspberry, but also STM32 MP2 or others, then you will have to use our pro module board and the multiple Linux drivers we have available on our website. And last but not least, we are currently working on the STM32 N6 drivers to support our image sensors. So this new MCU was released a few weeks ago, and we're looking forward to announcing these drivers. Fantastic. Now, Teres, are there any other products in this new family? So far, we've only been talking about the VD55G1, but there are other sensors. So you have the VD55G0 with the 0.4 megapixel resolution, and then you have the VD56G3 and the VD66GY. They are the same sensor, they have the same features, the same pro modules actually, but they have different chromas. So the first one is monochrome and the other one is RGB. For each and every of these sensors, you will have the main board available, the pro module board, and the sensor board. And of course, the different pro modules. And just to add, the pro modules come with different options because they are available with different fields of view. Fantastic. Well, Teres, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. And thank you for joining me, Thomas. Thank you very much, Amelia, for organizing this uh, short talk. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from ST Microelectronics. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash